Metro Politics on Jewish Week TV. I'm here in City Hall with none other than the Speaker of the City Council, the Honorable Christine Quinn. Thank you very much for your time here today. How are thank you? Thank you. I'm well. How are you? Good. Thank you. Uh, congratulations on your second term as thank the Speaker you. of the City Council. Thank you. And uh, can you take us through a day in the life of the City Council Speaker. What is it like? <laughs> well, there are no two that are the same, actually, uh, which makes uh, part of the reason why the job is fun and exciting. But any day could be a mix of uh, meeting with important uh, organizations that represent New Yorkers, not-for-profit groups, advocacy groups, meeting with council members, participating in committee hearings or stated meetings, uh, doing community events or events with constituency groups across the city. It's a pretty big mix. I know you just came back just last week from yes. a trip to Israel. You spent yes. uh, several days in Israel. And uh, what was that like? What was uh, well, the purpose of the trip? It was, it was terrific. Uh, myself and about 13 or so other members went it was a trip organized by uh, Michael Miller and the Jewish Community Relations Council. And I think the point of the trip was to deepen elected officials or council members in this case is understanding of uh, political and cultural situation in Israel uh, and hopefully through expanding knowledge, deepen the connection and solidarity between the two countries or between the country and New York City. And it was uh, the trip, uh, of course, as any trip to Israel, uh, does did not disappoint at all. It was a great trip, and I uh, had been there before, but I got to actually see parts of the country that I hadn't been to before, so that was really exciting as well. Why is it important for city council members who deal on a municipal level to, to understand uh, international issues? Well, you know, uh, it's important for a couple of different reasons. One, New York City is the most international city in the world. Two, we're the home of the United Nations, so we have a particular responsibility, I think, to be a voice on international issues and international civil and human rights issues. And also, uh, whether it's Haiti or Ireland or Israel, uh, countries which represent the history of large portions of New York City's population, I think it's incumbent upon elected officials if we're going to really represent those New Yorkers or those new New Yorkers well, we need to understand their country of origin or their ancestors' country of origin. What was the highlight of the trip for you? I don't know that I could pick one particular highlight because it was a great trip. I will this say- your second trip, correct? My third trip. Third trip. Uh, second as speaker. I will say meeting with the settlers uh, in, on the Golan Heights where I had never been before. I actually got to have lunch with a man who was 75. He was one of the people who had founded this kibbutz uh, about 30 or 35 years before, which is remarkable I if you think about it. He went out into part of the country where there was nothing and no one and has built this wonderful community that is a, a great home for lots of people, but also actually a thriving tourist uh, destination in Israel. He was wonderful and actually a very inspiring given his amazing vision and fortitude. I think on your previous trip, uh, you unfortunately had an opportunity to experience a rocket attack. Yes, we did not get bombed on this trip, which in and of itself was a, a highlight. We actually uh, didn't go to Steyroth this time because things are quiet, thank God, in Steyroth. So that was, I think, is noteworthy in and of itself. Now from time to time in the council, there are these uh, sometimes contentious resolutions having to deal with the Middle East. Uh, do you anticipate any of those coming up in this uh, well, current well, council? We've, although we've tried to remain in, in recent years a voice on international issues, we've tried to move away from doing that through the resolution process. There's a lot of other ways to do that, through letters, through speaking out at rallies, through how you spend your time. Often the resolution process kind of bogs down and becomes divisive, not unifying. So although we're going to continue to be an international voice on Israel and other issues, we're trying to do it in more unifying, less distracting ways. Actually, one of the things we're talking about now is, is letters, a letter we might want to draft around sanctions to, on Iran. One of the people who's been involved in some of those controversial resolutions uh, is Councilman Charles Barron. Uh, I understand you know, he obviously challenged you to be speaker uh, successfully, and I understand in this council he has not been granted any chairman, chairs of any committees. He was stripped of the Higher Education Committee chair. What is your relationship with him? Um, well, you know, first of all, I'll say people on the council are obviously free and welcome to have whatever position they want on local or international issues. That said, if you're going to get the privilege of uh, being a chair of a committee. We've tried to pick chairs who, not that they're going to agree on everything, not that they're going to agree with all their constituents on everything, but who are largely unifying uh, voices or unifying uh, individuals. And that's what I think we've put together with the slate of chairs that we now have, and I'm proud of that slate. We're looking at a very, very difficult budget process coming up, but we're in the middle of it now. 
And uh, so much of the funding that goes to social services, particularly money for the aging, goes through the city council. I understand that about two thirds, I'm sorry, a third of the uh, funding for aging programs are going through the council. Is will that you, right? Will you be able to maintain that level of funding uh, in this budget crisis with a huge uh, deficit looking at? Well, one of the things I, I've done as it relates to the budget over the past four years is try not to negotiate it in the press, mm -hmm. with all due respect to the press. So I'm not going to today say, uh, anything definitive about the budget, about what will be in there or what won't be in there come the end of June. What I am going to say is we're going to work very hard to do everything we can to, in this tough climate, preserve core services. Obviously, seniors are a core constituency, and the services the government gives them is very important to their livelihood. So we're going to try to sustain core services, but I'm just not going to go through issue by issue at this point pretty early in the process. The member item process is also very important to community organizations. Uh, will, will members will be able to, to fund those community organizations in any way close to the same level? Uh, you know, member items will continue. I think they are an important part of making sure that the infrastructure of community groups is alive in the city of New York. What amount they'll be for anything is something that sitting here in the beginning of March is too early to say. Council Speaker Christine Quinn, thank you so much thank for being you. with us today. We wish you the best of luck in your Thank you very much. Take care.